that we've reached a one year agreement with Adam Wainwright to be our starting pitcher next year in 2022. Um, it's great that he'll be back with Yachty and have an opportunity to uh, uh, hit some milestones as a tandem uh, in the 22 seasons, although they've hit so many already. Uh, of course, more than that is he's been a very effective pitcher uh, throughout his career, uh, one of the greatest Cardinals ever, and has really led the staff a number of years. And uh, just look what he's accomplished this year. I think back to when he broke in and um, what he did as a young reliever, uh, helping us win playoffs and world championships. And um, he's just been a, a wonderful player and he's been a really wonderful person and leader as well as being a great player. I know uh, the younger guys look up to him. He's always willing to help other pitchers on the staff, particularly young pitchers coming up. And we couldn't ask for a, a better Cardinal. So we're thrilled that Adam will be with us uh, next year. And who knows, uh, maybe beyond, hopefully beyond. Uh, we look at him as a lifetime Cardinal and uh, one whose legacy will uh, remain among the top players forever. So uh, Adam, great to have you back next year. and. Looking forward to this year's playoffs. We're not ready to turn the uh, turn the switch to next year yet. We've got a lot of work to do this year. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for having me back. Thanks. It's always been a tremendous blessing to feel a real family here in St. Louis and to feel like uh, you, Mr. DeWitt, and your family and the ownership group and, and Mr. Moe, obviously, also have always embraced me and treated me like one of your own. And, and uh, I... I don't want to be anywhere else. Who am I kidding? You know, this is where I want to be. And, and uh, y'all have made me feel very loved. And, and uh, now I just have to go out and perform for y'all. Thank you. We'll uh, turn it over to Mo for some remarks on today's announcement. Yeah, thank you, Brian. And uh, first off, just want to thank uh, Bill um, and the DeWitt family for the support and allowing us to go out and, and retain really core players to this organization. And uh, Adam certainly exemplifies that. I want to thank Adam, your wife, Jenny, and really your kids. Um, I remember seeing the post on Twitter, even though I'm not on Twitter, but someone gave me a copy of it. So that's how I got it, um, that you were, you guys were all in and, and they wanted to see you play. And I think just want to thank them for sharing you for another year. Um, I know it's a huge commitment. Um, I know what this game can do to families and, uh, you're the example of, of how it works. So, so send my best to them. I also want to thank Steve Hammond. Um, he's someone that I've gotten to know over the years. We've done a lot of deals with Adam. He's, he's someone that uh, from the agent world, um, I'd actually say we're friends. And, uh, you know, even getting through this deal, we were able to, to work through some of the complications and, and did it with, with class and, and professionalism. So I just, want to thank him as well but you know for me getting this deal done was 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 something I felt was very important for this organization um, not just because Wayno and Yachty represent probably the greatest pitching tandem in baseball history but also the fact of, of what really Adam brings to the Cardinals and I just wanted to touch on that a little bit um, clearly we, we think we're getting a top of rotation starter that's important um, someone that brings experience to our team, veteran experience, someone that brings leadership and, and the ability to mentor. And, you know, candidly, for all of you that don't know Adam, he's just really a great all around person. And so having that type of, of player in your organization, representing the birds on the bat, representing the DeWitts, myself and, and all others, it, it, it was really quite simple to get here. And um, he's an amazing guy. Um, what I'm sharing with you is nothing I've never shared with him. So he knows how I think and how we feel about him. And so um, I'm just great, grateful to have you back. And you know, ultimately, I, I wish you continued success. So um, at this time, I'll turn it back over to you, Brian. OK, thank you, Mo. Uh, Adam, before we get to the Q&A, if you have any remarks you'd like to make first, we'll certainly open the floor to you. And when that's finished, we'll, we'll get to our question and answer session. Thank you. 
Yeah, um, I did have a few things. Thank you, Mo, for those kind words. That means a lot to me. Um, Mr. Mo's become family to us also, and and as Mr. DeWitt and his family also. I mean, it's uh, it does feel like family here, but I, I, um, I, I really feel the same way he that Mr. Mo said about you know, how the, uh, the whole negotiation process, everything that we, even when I was broken a few years ago, when I was completely broken, you know, I wasn't going to be able to go out and get a, a big league job anywhere else, honestly. And, and he, he gave me, a, Mr. DeWitt gave me a chance to, to, to re-earn it, you know, to have a, to, to have a roster spot and to come in here and, and perform. And, and it was, you know, it was, uh, it was a great opportunity for me to uh, come back as a Cardinal, whether that was going to be final or whether that was going to be the the sending off point for something much greater, which it ended up being. Um, but I was great. I've been grateful for every opportunity I've been given here. There's, there's just uh, not many people that have been blessed with a situation like St. Louis for as long as I've been able to play here. And also my catcher, Yachty coming back here was a big factor in me wanting to come back also. I mean, he's, uh, he's more than just a catcher to me. He's a, he's one of my closest friends and um, just somebody who's, who's just uh, grown you know, we grown up together. Honestly, we, we, we were kids together in the big leagues and now we're, you know, now we're the old geezers in the big leagues together. Um, uh, as somebody wrote the other day in, in the New York times or some other paper, but, uh, it's just been, a, it's been a, a tremendous experience for me here. I can't wait to, as Mr. DeWitt said, be a Cardinal for life. Um, that is, that means a lot to me. It means a lot to me. And, and also I do have to say something to about my family also, because it was, you know, everybody knows it was, it was either me play another year or the kids get a dog. And, uh, and they, they said, dad, we'll go one more year, we'll go one more year without a dog. And then you, you, I'm going to like, they're going to like, just go take someone else's dog if this doesn't happen soon. So, <laughs> so uh, my family has been uh, incredible in, in support of me also. And, you know, my, my kids are doing remote school so I can play baseball and my daughter's Bailey, my oldest daughter, who was, on my shoulder like this during the World Series parade in 2006 um, is now in high school and she's staying with grandma every now and then so she can go to a real high school and traveling back and forth to see games and see me too. So it is a big sacrifice for our family um, and they're just amazing and they're amazing people and they're, I love them so much and just I'm thankful for everybody who's involved in this. I'm thankful for this media too. I mean, I really am, you know. Um, how many players could get up and say that the, the media has has treated them fair and respectful their entire career? And, and uh, that is that's the St. Louis media that there's not a whole lot of cities out there doing it like y'all do it. So congratulations to y'all for being fair and decent people also. Adam, thank you and congratulations. We'll uh, get started with our question and answer session. We'll start with Erica Weston with Valley Sports Midwest. Thank you, Brian. First off, Adam, congratulations. Um, we're all excited to have you back in, in St. Louis for next season. Um, that video that you released with your family back in the beginning of September, once you shared that publicly, were you pretty optimistic that something could be done at least by the end of the regular season? I was, and that was a, that was a conversation that, you know, we, I try not to talk too much about the future. I try to stay in the present, but you know, when you're dealing about about whether you're going to play or retire, that's kind of something that you can't just make that decision on a whim. You know, you have to kind of talk those things out. And I wanted to make sure my whole family was OK with that. And all my kids were OK with that. And uh, honestly, we waited as long as we did because um, my daughter started school in August and we wanted to make sure that that situation was going to work. You know, high school is is a different animal. And we wanted to make sure that kind of going back and forth was going to be a manageable thing for the family and for her. I mean, the last thing I want to do is is make high school any tougher for my kids or or middle school or even elementary school for my kids if I don't have to. So um, a lot of a lot of things went into that decision, but you know they finally gave me their blessing and I we finally came to a conclusion that yeah we want we'd like to try one more season and and um, that's where it, that's where it went. To hear Mr. Dewitt call you one of the greatest Cardinals ever amongst an organization with a rich lineage of pretty historic players what does that mean to you um it's uh mind blowing to me honestly uh you know because when i think of the greatest i think of mr gibson and i think of mr lou and and obviously the great ozzy smith and 
Willie McGee and these wonderful people um, that, you know, you see all the time and getting to spend time with, with Stan, the man before he passed away and lots of time with Mr. Red, you know, you get to, to be with those, those legacy players and those, those guys wearing the red coats, they're wearing them for a reason. And the, the way we're winning now, it's because they passed those traditions down. And, and so that's what I'm just trying to continue on, um, passing those lessons and legacies that they did uh, onto the next generation so that we can continue this great tradition we have here going forward. But to be even mentioned in the same conversation with those guys is, uh, is incredibly um, powerful and incredibly doesn't make sense to me. You know, it just, uh, I, I just don't ever think of myself as that type of player, but I'm, I'm grateful that he does. <laughs> Derek Gould, St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Adam, congratulations, and thanks for the kind words about the group of us here. Um, wanted to ask you, and you've touched on it a little bit, the, the legacy aspect of it, but also their, their interest in giving you that one-year deal to prove yourself. You could have walked away and still be considered one of the best pitchers of, in Cardinals history at that time. You know, two championships, rings, closing out one. How much did those years and and that and that that family aspect drive you in in a sense and their investment in you drive you to to come back for this well i think um that was the like you know the most fair deal ever really right like i i i didn't deserve any guaranteed money honestly i mean i i had i needed to go out and prove it i needed to go out and 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 show the world that I wasn't completely broken again. And, and I got to say thank you to Dominic Leone too, because Dom is the only reason I'm still playing baseball uh, on a level that nobody really knows that because I, I, sh I, I wasn't recovering. Uh, my, my arm was not re responding well and it just wasn't getting any better. And I shut it down, but Dominic Leone was on the uh, disabled list and he needed a throwing partner. And so I just like, you know, originally started going out and throwing grenades with them just to try to, to help him be able to extend back. And then all of a sudden, you know, the, the I, I got a couple more bullets in the, in the clip and it was just like, it, it just started my, my arm started moving well again. And, um, you know, that, I mean, and there's just, there was so many, there's so many people, right. That I can, I have to look back on and thank the, the training staff here with Adam Olson and, and Chris Conroy and, 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 uh, Jeremy Clipperton, uh, incredible so giving of their time and 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 really more than that thomas knox our our rehab coordinator he nursed me back to health as adam olson did several times through my career but a guy i really want to say thanks to a guy named jason shutt who's the head of player performance i think for us and jason spends i don't know a fair amount of his time every day making sure that my every single day routine in season and off season uh, is regimented and has a plan and a purpose. And that kind of um, plan and purpose kept me really motivated and, and, and not going out. When I went, when I almost was forced out of the game because of injury, that was hard for me. I did not, that's not how I wanted to go out. And now being able to uh, kind of do that on my own terms is, is a much more meaningful way to go out for me. I'm very long winded. I'm, I'll, I'll tell stories all day long. If you if you let me, Derek, you got to ask the next question quick. All right. I, I will. Yadier was pretty clear with us that he's going to play one more year. Um, and he also was clear that he was going to nudge you to come along for the ride. Is, is that what you're saying? That that next year at this time, maybe November, I guess, or for Christmas, your kids will get a dog. <laughs> okay. So several of my favorite athletes growing up retired like three times. And I, I don't want to retire three times. I, I, when I say that I'm done, I want to know that I'm done. Now, I will say that the odds of my kids having a dog, um, you know, after a, the season next year are very, very high. I'll just give you that. There's very, very good odds. Uh, but I'm not going to go on record right now and tell you that I'm 100% done because that conversation has not been had yet um, with the family. And that, that decision is not 100%. And I want to be 100% when I make that decision. That's good. Do they have a name picked out? No. It changes no, everything. You know, it was a couple of years ago. It was like Jewel Diamond. And now that they're getting a little older, it's a little, a little more grown up. So this will be my last question. Thanks for humoring me. Um, well, I guess for humoring me all these years. Um, the uh, 
the chance to pitch the wild card game, just one game to decide whether you guys advance, how much does that mean to you? Um, obviously your performance dictated it, but for it to be official and to have that conversation with Shield, what'd that mean to you? Um, I went home when I found out I was pitching the wild card. I mean, you know, I, I, I assumed I was pitching the wild card game, but I, I didn't know that I was pitching the wild card game. And it was, it was brought up to me in such a um, nonchalant way that it meant, a, it meant a lot to me. It was kind of crazy. I, I went, I went home and told my, my wife this story. Um, he oh, really honest, all that happened was Schulte walked over and said, Hey, what do you need to be ready for Wednesday? And I said, what's Wednesday? And he goes, you know what Wednesday is. And I said, am I pitching that game? He goes, yeah. Like it was obvious, you know, and, and uh, that's such a cool thing for me. Cause you know, three years ago, I was like, you know, on the mound, basically, you know, dead. So um, three years later to, to have it kind of be a no brainer that I was pitching the most important game of the season. Um, even though I tell our guys every fifth day that, you know, my day is the biggest game of the year. This one really is going to be the biggest game of the year. And, and uh, to have that kind of, you know, like, yeah, that's, we, you're the guy we want there. And, and I've had said several teammates come over and say, yeah, you're the guy we want there. That means a lot to me. That means a lot. Thank you, Adam. Congratulations. Thanks. Randy Carricker, ESPN Radio, St. Louis. Uh, con Adam, congratulations. I have one for you and then one for Mo. But I want to start with this. As you pitch now and plan to pitch next year, are you having more fun competing than you might have six, seven, eight years ago? Is Do you have a greater appreciation of, of competing with hitters than you did? I'm having more fun pitching now than I've ever had. There's no question about it. Um, I, I, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm borderline psycho about competing in any ways. Uh, I love, I just, I, I mean, that is like, I, I can't do anything without competing. Like somebody, that, and I played golf with somebody a couple years ago and I was like, all right, what'd you shoot? He's like, we didn't keep score. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, that doesn't even, how do you know, like how to get better or whatever? He's like, no, we just played for fun. I, I don't do anything like that. Like I have fun doing it, but I want to try to be the best at it. And I want to see how I can get better at it. Uh, but I'll tell you what's fun. Anybody can get outs with a hundred, you know, I mean, sure. I could go out and pitch the hundred mile an hour fastball tomorrow and get lots of outs, but you know, you try doing it at 80, 89. That's, that's fun, man. That's that, that you got to do things a little different. You got to sink it and cut it and, and keep guys on their toes. And the other day Kisner was catching me and he, he called something that I would never do. And I was like, but they'll never expect that. That's brilliant. Like that's, I've never done that. And I did it and it worked. It was crazy. You know, so I'm having those, those kinds of thoughts on the mound are really driving me, you know, like I know I got him out this way, this way, and this way, the first three times and this fourth way, he has no idea what's coming because I could flood him with this, this, or that. I mean, I love that, man. That the, the pitch mix is, uh, is, is really in the sequencing. I've fallen in love with, with sequencing and how do you get to the strike three or how do you get to that ground ball you want and, and setting him up for that, that that final pitch that that's really fun to me. Can and then yeah, Mo and and Bill, if you you could weigh in here too because you guys have a great lineage of leadership in your rotation going back to when you guys got here with with Hentgen and then Kyle and then Chris Carpenter and Wayno. How important is it to, for you guys to have as many days as possible for Adam to spend with the, the pitchers that you have here and the pitchers that are on the way? Well, I'm always, always awkward when you ask two people questions. Can you just simplify it? Bill, take. Well, as I said before, you know, Adam's been such a great mentor to the other pitchers, veterans and, and rookies alike. And, you know, he, he, his knowledge of pitching is incredible. I mean, he's uh, IQ, pitching IQ is off the chart. And, you know, it's really been helpful. And, you know, I've always said, you, you can win some with hitting. Uh, you, you can't win without pitching. You just can't uh, in, in the major leagues. So the importance of what Adam does and, and what he brings to the staff, uh, you know, you really can't measure. But over the years, you've seen it. I mean, we've had winning seasons. 
Uh, we've gone to playoffs and uh, we've had wonderful offense. Uh, but somebody said, well, you can't win that pitching. You can't win with that hitting either. I said, no, that's true too. But um, the game is, uh, you know, it's pitching, defense, base running, hitting. There's a lot of aspects to it, but uh, it's so critical to get uh, pitching and particularly starting pitching to, to do their job. Mo, oh. you're on the clock. Okay, not much to add there, but I mean, I think Randy, the easiest way to think about this is think about all the great pitchers that have pitched since Adam has been in the big leagues. So going back to basically 05 that he's gotten to pick their brains on, he represents that 16 years of, of Intel and the, probably the greatest thing you can say about Adam is he's willing to share it with others and that's what he's done so I think when you look at the success of this organization it has been based on that hand-me-down approach and um, you know we're, we're just fortunate to have two anchors that have done that over those 16 years in Bueno and Yachty so yeah that's pretty much been a key part of our success. Thank you gentlemen. Okay uh, Katie Wu from the athletic. Mosella, Mr. Wainwright, Adam, uh, first, congratulations. Um, I'll ask you the same question that I asked your catching counterpart a few weeks ago. After going through the free agency market and testing the waters last season, why was it important for you to get this deal done before getting to that point this year? Well, I mean, it, it adds a level of, you know, um, stability to the family life. For sure. Uh, it was it was fun being able to do that last year and just kind of experience it. I'd never experienced really a free agent um, time before. I, I had fun doing it, but I, you know, the end goal obviously was to come back here to St. Louis. Um, but that's something I experienced. And, uh, you know, that that. I think you realize at the end of the day that. I'm in a very good situation. I, I just understood, you know, I understand that I'm in a very, very, very good situation here. Um, my family loves being here. I love being a part of this team. I love wearing these birds on the bat. I love that. Um, I love representing St. Louis, you know, and I feel like it's home for me now. Um, so, uh, leaving is, is, is going away from home, you know? So, um, I, I don't want to go anywhere else. I didn't want to go anywhere else, but, um, I think my, my wife, uh, said several times like, Hey, uh, that was fun, um, but uh, we don't have to wait until January, whatever it was, because then you got to worry about spring training housing and this and that, and that was really kind of crazy last year. So just adds a level of stability to the whole situation. And, and, uh, and also at the same time, you realize, you know, what you got here and, and uh, it's a pretty good situation. Very Thanks, blessed. Adam. Thanks, Adam. Uh, Mo, same question for you, really. Why was it important from, from your side to get this deal done before the offseason? Well, as you can imagine, um, our season's been very unique in the sense of, you know, you know, it hasn't gone necessarily as planned. We always thought we had a great team, um, but it took a while for really to, to show what we were, really what we sort of built. And one of the things that I thought going into the offseason would just be that we had two guys that we're anchoring to coming back. And so, you know, last off season, we spent a lot of time working on the Nolan trade. And once we got that accomplished, then it allowed us to know what else we could do. And, and therefore right away, we turned the page to try to get Adam and uh, Yachty back. So if we can avoid those sort of last minute rushing decisions before spring training, I thought it would be um, very beneficial to us. And again, when you realize what these guys have meant to the organization, it, it just made sense. And so I think everybody that was involved in this process would agree. It felt right. And uh, we're all glad it, it was done and, and done in a professional manner. Thank you both. Zach Silver, MLB.com. Hey Adam, congratulations. i um, going to ask you another question that I asked Yadi when he signed his deal, but how meaningful is it for you to, to do this together to, you know, obviously you're going to keep options open, but to do at least his last year with him, how meaningful is that going to be to you? And to go on this tour where he's looking to get booed everywhere, how much excited are you uh, to do that with him? Yeah, uh, I can't remember who. 
I mean, it might have been Larry Walker or somebody said, you know, if you if you've getting booed in other in other visiting parks, you've you've done it right for a long time. You know, you you've uh, you've had some big moments, and Yadi, you know, Yadi gets booed everywhere because Yadi's had huge hits everywhere we go that beat him. You know, and he's he just is uh, he's got those moments. So that's like one of the greatest compliments you can get when you get booed at a visit, at a visiting park. That's a, that's a great feeling. Um, until you're walking down the street the next day in the city and you don't really know what's about to happen. Uh, but uh, I, I, you know, I, like I said, I, I'm, I'm, I'm almost certainly going to ride off with him, but I'm not formally saying that, but I'm so excited to play another year with Yachty because he's a, he's a first ballot hall of famer. He's uh, he's a legendary player. He's a once in a generation type talent catcher. And he's just a special person and a special teammate. So I mean, I always tell people one of the things that when I look back on my career, one of the things I'll be the most excited to tell people about is that I got to play catch with Yachty every every fifth day. No, I have one quick question for you. Um, hear Adam talk about just the stuff that he went through with his injuries and just from, from knowing him as a person, knowing him throughout his career, how much joy have you had watching him operate these past few years, seeing you know the competitive nature that he's had and just the ability that he's had to, to make him and, and bring him to this level that he's at right now? Well, needless to say, I'm not surprised. Um, He's just one of those people that is is extremely committed. He um, stays present. He, he knows how to do that as well as anyone. And, you know, he mentioned the, the team that helped get him back. He mentioned Adam Olson and his staff, Jason Schott, Thomas Knox. And, you know, I think you also have to throw in Dr. Pilata. I mean, these are like, these are people that, that, you know, we all kind of think that we're the ones doing it, but it, it, it does take a village. And, and I think in Adam's case, it's, uh, it's someone that's, that's remarkable because he has stayed in house. He has used our team. And, um, I would, I would think not speaking for him, but you know, he truly believes that this group is uh, part of his success. And, and so, um, you know, to, to end this, I, I'm not surprised at all. And I, I've learned a long time ago, never bet against the man. That was a big, that was a big miss for me not mentioning Dr. Pletta. I'm glad you, you did that, Mr. Mo, because, uh, you know, he's performed, I don't know, three or four or five surgeries on me minimum, you know, so uh, definitely would not be here without Doc. Ben Fredericton, St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Adam, just one for me, congrats. Uh, I'm curious how you viewed this. There have been times where we've heard you really motivated by people who don't think you can do it or people who thought you, you, you weren't going to be able to get back to this level. And lately, in recent seasons, we've heard really none of that and almost just an appreciation for the competition and even sometimes thanking some of those people. When did you make that change? And, and how much different is it for you to compete from this place you're at now versus, you know, when you were kind of, I guess, trying to prove people wrong or motivated by that? Don't get me wrong. I, I've, I've been real thankful of lots of people, but I still carry those chips on my shoulder at all times um, because. And, and even if they're not thinking it, I've created that. I think I've told you all that over the years. You know, right now, in my mind, people are going, okay, he did it once, but he can't do it again, right? He, 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 won't, he won't beat whatever team he's going to pitch against in this Walker. He's too old to do that. It's too big a moment. He won't do this again next year. And in my mind, I'm just trying to build off what we did this year. This was, a, this was another starting point where we can get, get better next year. You know, that's, that's where I'm at in my mind. Oh, they think that was crazy. Wait till they see what I do next. That's that's what I'm trying to uh, accomplish. And so what a great way, you know, to motivate uh, yourself than than to not be satisfied where you are and to realize, yeah, that was decent. That was cool. But I could still do this, this and this better. And I'm going to plan on doing that next year. That's a fun thing for me to think about. Like, all right, we did this. This was great. What can we do better? How can I get better? How can I be the next level of performers uh, for this team that needs me. So I still carry those chips, no matter, no matter if they should be there or not, I've placed them there and people think I stink. That's what I, that's what I'm, that's what I'm going with for the re remainder of my career. Okay. Jeff Jones, Belleville News Democrat. Adam, I don't want to ruin the day with math, but the week you closed out the 2006 World Series, Dylan Carlson turned eight years old. And we uh, were talking to him on Zoom yesterday. And he said to us, that's our guy. You we were asking about you starting the wild card game. And that's what he said is, that's our guy. 
what does it mean to you to have had that experience across generations of players and to be our guy for a player like Dylan just at the start of his career? Yeah, that means a lot. That, that does. I mean, you know, he was like, what, two when I was in pro ball. Um, it's a crazy thought. But Yadi and I were sitting on the bench next to each other the other day, and I looked at him, and there was a – it was like a 20 – low 20s fan behind us, and they were cheering us on or whatever, and they had a Yadi Wayno poster. And I said, you know what's crazy, Yadi? That person doesn't have any memories of Cardinal baseball without us being on the team. That is a powerful thing to think about. You know, I mean, that's a that's a crazy thing to think about. And it's so neat uh, that that we have been able to have, you know, that place in people's memories for here in St. Louis for that long. It, it really is a special thing, um, one that I don't take for granted at all. And I know Yadi doesn't either. But it, it, uh, you have your young players looking at the old player going, all right. It's cool. Teach me, like, tell me how you're doing it. I want to be, you know, even I talked to some young pitchers from the Brewers the other day and they were like, man, you're 40. Like, how are you still getting outs? Like, I don't feel very good. And I'm 20 something. And, and, you know, I didn't give them all the secrets, by the way. I didn't give them all the secrets. But uh, it, it is it is a it is a cool uh, acknowledgement um, and one that I don't deserve at all. You know, the blessings that you know, I keep getting bestowed on me. I just don't, I don't deserve any of it. I'm just so, I'm so thankful for all of it. Benjamin Hockman, St. Louis Post Dispatch. Hey, Adam, congrats. Uh, you said that you're having uh, the most fun of your career. Do you sense that Yadier Molina is having the most fun of his career as well? He seems like it. He's, uh, you know, I mean, I don't even understand how he's still walking around. You know, the, he gets the face shot and the shoulder ball on the wrist shot and the off the top of the foot and off the toes and off the ankle and off the elbow every day. And it's like it, it's like it, it's like he needs it almost. Like it makes him feel normal to get those bruises. I just don't even know what, you know, his body, how, how strong it must be to be able to do that. But, um, he is always, I mean, when I see him, you know, we're always laughing and carrying on, but uh, the guy is just a, it, it, he knows how to, to speak into his players and to his pitchers and how to get the most out of his players better now than I've ever seen him. You know, he, he understands what the, the pitcher's going through and how to go out there and talk to him, whether it's got to be forceful or it's got to be a little love. He understands that better than I've ever uh, seen him do it before. And it's really cool to see. Thanks. Rob Brains. Hey, Adam, and my congratulations, too. Just a housekeeping question. Are you going to try to throw <clears> this weekend to get ready for Wednesday in a tune-up role or just kind of work in the bullpen? Do you have a plan for that yet? Um, the plan is uh, I'm going to get off the mound twice in bigger bullpens. Um, you know, we've gone on a, on a couple. I've got a couple of starts this year on a week rest, so it won't be completely new to me. And uh, at this point in the season, another extra day or two is, is not a bad thing. It isn't, um, you know, and this will this will get me ready if I need to pitch on every three or four days rest the whole rest of the year. I can, you know, I mean, this is a good time for me to lock everything in. I'm I'm able to get an extra workout in here. I'm able to get an extra bullpen in, and uh, there's some things I want to work on on the mound, honestly, that uh, I need to get a couple of kinks out. So um, this is a good time for me to to get a couple of bullpen sessions in. It's a good time for me to get a couple of uh, workouts in that I wouldn't have been able to get in. So this is a good time for me. Okay, we'll, we'll let Adam get on with his day. If uh, others would like to stay on, Mo and Mr. DeWitt uh, will be here for additional questions, but we'll let Adam get on with his day. And congratulations, Wayno. Thanks for the time. Thank you, guys. Thank you for the time. Thank you, Mr. DeWitt. Thank you, Mr. Mo. Thanks, Adam.